all right so here is the new unit that we received from auto ecms okay so basically we're gonna remove this old abs unit and we will replace it by this one and as you can see the new one looks nice and shiny it looks identical so we're gonna install this abs control unit on the truck and this is a remanufactured one so after we install this we should be able to talk to it with a scan tool and the abs light should go off after that i mean the abs light on a dash should go off okay so removing this uh is pretty straightforward we have to disconnect all these brake lines and after disconnecting the brake lines we're going to disconnect these electrical connectors and then the uh, whole unit has a mount so you see that nut over there we have to undo this nut and then there's another bolt i don't know if you can see that so that 13 millimeter bolt down there we have to undo that one and then there's another bolt back here so that nut over there so those three nuts so basically after we undo this nut over here that one and then another one over here this whole unit is going to come out with its uh mounting support okay so we're going to remove this and we will install this new uh this remanufactured abs control unit so i'm going to seat you guys over here so we can get this abs control unit replaced so actually before we replace this in case some of you wanted to know the part number of this abs control unit here's the part number so if you are replacing this abs control unit this is the part number you will need all right so now let's get this abs control unit installed all right so i'm gonna start by disconnecting these electrical connectors for the abs control unit So after that, I'm going to disconnect these brake lines. Now, as you're disconnecting these ABS brake lines, you have to make sure that you know where they go, okay? You don't want to interchange them because some of them go to the front, some of them go to the back. So you have to make sure that you put them back where they came out of. Alright, so I removed all the bolts that hold the ABS control unit mount down on the frame. So now I'm going to lift the whole ABS control unit. So here it comes. So here comes our ABS control unit. So now let's take it to the bench. We're going to remove this ABS control unit and we will install the new one on this mounting pad. So let's take this to the bench. All right, so now basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove this old ABS control unit and install this new one on this mounting pad. So this has two 13 millimeter bolts on each side. So this bolt over here and the other one. So I'm gonna remove this. Now we're gonna get we're gonna remove this out so here comes the defective abs control unit so now we're gonna install the new one
Alright, so as you install the new ABS control unit, you have to make sure that the bushings, these little bushings here are not torn or worn out. And the bushings for this, I mean the bushings that were on the old ABS control unit are good. So we're going to reuse those bushings. So now we're going to remove these plugs. I always like to take these plugs out now because these plugs can be a little hard to remove once the ABS is on on the vehicle because you don't have enough room to get these plugs out. So we're going to take this out. All right, so we got all the plugs removed. So now let's take this new ABS control unit to the vehicle and install it. All right, so I'm gonna install this new ABS control unit now. Alright, so the new ABS control unit is installed. So now I'm going to connect the scan tool to the truck to see if we can now talk to this ABS control unit. Remember before, we couldn't talk to the old ABS control unit. So I'm going to connect the scan tool to it. We'll see if we can talk to this one. And then we will also double check our communication lines to see if the spike, remember that big spike of voltage that we saw on the communication waveform voltage of the old ABS control unit. So I'm gonna get the scan tool connected to the vehicle and then I'll bring you guys back up so we can do our last checks before we end this video. All right guys, so I got the scan tool connected to the vehicle. So now it is the moment of the truth. If we made it the right call, now this ABS control unit should be able to communicate with the scan tool. And we're also going to, I already did back probe the uh, communication wires off camera just to speed up the process. We're going to look at the voltage waveform of the communication wires. So now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to our scan tool and we're going to try to talk to this ABS control module. The key is on in the truck. So let's go to scanner. And let's go to engine. Let's make sure the scan tool can talk to the engine control module first. So let's go to codes. So codes only. As you can see, we can talk to the engine control module and the engine control module doesn't have any codes in it. So let's back out of here. And now let's go to the ABS control unit. So let's go to anti-lock bricks. This is a four wheel ABS, so let's click on that. So if this scan tool can talk to the ABS control unit, once we click on code, we should be able to read any codes or it should say no codes present. So this will tell us that the ABS control unit is now talking to the scan tool. So now let's click on codes. What the heck? So right there, we still have our communication error. So the communication message right there. I know the key is on. Actually, let's go back inside the truck and double check. Let's make sure that the key is on. So right there, the key is definitely on. So the key is on. So let's go back under the hood. So the key is definitely on. Let's exit out. Let's try to look at some data. What the heck? Did we make the right call, guys? So right there, we still can't communicate with this ABS control module. So let's back out. 
Hold on. Something is wrong. What did I miss? Hold on. So, ABS. Let's go to data. And as you can see, we still can't talk to the ABS control unit. Well, like I said at the beginning of the video, if you can't talk to any modules, you have to make sure that your powers and grounds to the modules are good. If you check all your powers and grounds, if you still can't talk to it, the issue is the module. But I know that we have replaced the module. So this module here has been replaced. So we definitely have a new module and we did check our powers and grounds. Everything checked out okay. Actually, let me let me double check that one more time. I'm going to use this test light connected to ground and this is a new ABS control module. So let's make sure we have power here. So my test light is connected to ground. As you can see, it's lit. So let's check the second power supply wire. So we definitely have power there. Let's check the ignition wire, the wire that gets power when you turn the key on. So right here, and the test light is lit. So the control unit is definitely receiving power from all the three wires. Now let's check the ground wires. So I'm back probing the ground wire now, and this unit has two ground wires. So now I'm gonna switch my test light to battery positive. Now we're gonna test the ground wires at the ABS control unit. And as you can see, the test light is lit, so there's ground. I mean, we did do this test already, and everything checked out fine when we did test these wires. So as you can see, so we have power and ground at the ABS control unit, but how come we still can't communicate with this? Let's try this one more time. I mean, did I miss something? I don't think so. See, we still have the no com message. So what do you think is the problem, guys? I'm missing something. Well, the other thing that's kind of going through the back of my mind is an open wire in the communication lines. And if that's the issue, that will be my mistake. That will be my fault for not uh, thoroughly checking the communication wires. But we did back probe the uh, communication lines, remember, before we ordered this ABS control unit, and we saw a huge spike on the lab scope and when we were disconnecting this, uh, this electrical connector, the spike was disappearing on the lab scope. Now what I want to do is I want to back probe the communication lines again. Okay, so le let's look at the waveform of the communication lines. And let's see if the waveform is going to look different from what we saw. Okay, because if there's an open, because we still can communicate with this ABS control unit. And it's new, it's a remain one. You know, so it's a remanufactured ABS control unit. We can talk to it, but if there's an open in either the can high or can low on this end of the circuit, but I don't think so though. If it was open somewhere, we would have a flat line on the on the scope. This is a little weird because when you have an open, if you have if we had an open somewhere in the harness, once a back probe here at the ABS control unit, we will not see the message or the voltage coming from the other modules because there's an open. We were just going to see a flat line. We weren't going to see any activities like we saw. I mean, let me connect this back up and let's see what we're going to see on the lab scope. This is weird. I mean, I'll be so frustrated or so mad at myself if it ends up being an open communication wire. This ABS control unit was pretty expensive. It's, this is like $800 part. Okay, so now let's go to our lab scope and see what we're gonna find. So we can't talk to this. Let's back out of here. Let's go to... So let's go to scope multimeter for channel. So we're going to turn these channels on, channel 1 and channel 2. We can't see anything on the screen. Uh-oh, I, I saw that spike. Let's decrease our voltage a little bit. So I'm going to drop down our voltage scale. Let's drop it down to 5 volts on both of them. 
Actually, let's go to 10 volts. Wow. Did you, do you see this spike? But this is what we saw on the bad ABS control unit though. This is weird. I mean, this ABS control unit is new. Did we order a bad ABS control unit or did it, is it just defective out of the box? I mean, that's a possibility. So watch. You see this? This is what's causing the no communication. We shouldn't have this high voltage spike on the screen and this is just looking like the waveform that we had when we were still connected to this ABS control unit because this is the bad one so now what I'm gonna do is I'm, I'm basically redoing everything we just did I'm going to disconnect this electrical connector while I disconnect it let's see if that spike is gonna disappear on the screen so I'm going to try to do this while, so let's disconnect this. So as you can see, we have that high spike. So once I disconnect the ABS control unit, as you can see, the spike disappears. Okay. So there's no longer a spike. And we still have some type of activity here because if I drop it down to you, Actually, let me turn off the, the let me turn off the trigger first. We do have activity on this line, not really on the uh, yellow line, but we do have activity on the green line. Let me drop the yellow line even more. You know, so we do have activity. So I don't think we have an open in the communication wire because. If we had an open in one of these wires, these lines should have just been flat, okay? And we wouldn't have a voltage on any of the wires. The fact that we have a voltage here, well, where is that voltage coming from? You know, the live voltage here is 2.5 on the yellow trace and then 2.4 on the green trace. Where is this voltage coming from? Well, this voltage is coming from the other modules. The other modules are putting out this voltage in the network to talk to the other uh, to the other modules or the other nodes on the network. Actually, let me bring up this schematic here. So here is the wiring diagram. This is pretty much everything we were looking at last time. So we got the new module. There's power and ground. So right now I'm back probing this uh, CAN bus wires. I'm sorry for the glare. So I'm back probing this wire and this wire right over here. I mean, there's voltage. The fact that there's voltage on these communication wires, this voltage is coming from the other modules, okay? If we didn't have any voltage after disconnecting this connector, I was gonna wonder about either having an open wire on one of these wires, I mean the communication wires. So these wires right here that say CDD bus, CDD bus positive, CDD bus negative. So I disconnect this electrical connector. We have two point, almost two volts and a half on these communication wires. So when I disconnect this connector, we have two volts and a half on these communication wires. Well, where is that two volt and a half coming from? Well, that two volts and a half is coming from the other control modules. The other control modules are putting out this voltage to talk to the rest of the modules. That's the message on the network. All right. So if we had an open wire somewhere in a circuit, let's say somewhere down over here, by back probing at the connector, I was just going to see a flat line. Okay. And if we had a short to ground, the ground was going to take that voltage down to zero. So if you connect your, if you back probe here at the connector, and you see zero volts, it means you either have an open wire or a communication wire that's shorted to ground. Or if we were shorted to positive, we were gonna have 12 volts here at the communication wires, either the positive or the negative wire of the CAN bus. So I don't think we are dealing with either an open wire or a shorted uh, wire on the communication lines. So I believe the issue is just a defective ABS control module. So we got a bad 
ABS control module. So we got a defective ABS control module out of the box. That's the only thing I can think of because I don't think the checks we did were wrong. We were definitely on the right path, but the problem here is the part. It's not us, it's the part, okay? So, yeah, I mean, let's look at the lab scope one more time. As you can see, the signal looks good, but as soon as I plug this, so as soon as I plug this, the, the, it's gonna spike up. So just right there, did you see the spike? I gotta trigger it so you can see it better. You know, so right there, you see that big spike right there? Let's increase our voltage scale so we can see it better. So right there guys, this is the problem. Defective new ABS control module. Well, this could be a lesson to some of us or some of you guys out there because, you know, just because you get a new ABS or remanufactured ABS control module out of the box, it could also be defective. So just keep that in the back of your mind. Don't just go chasing your tails because the part you're replacing can be bad also. So you, got, you just gotta know what to look for and if all your checks are okay, if you feel confident about your checks, then the problem is the module. At this point, the problem is the module. I'm gonna have to send this back. I haven't had bad luck with these guys at Auto ECMs. They always send me good uh, control units. I mean, I buy a lot of computers, I mean, engine computers and, and ABS control units from them. You know, I did get a lot of stuff from these guys. They always supply the right parts the first time and the good parts. I'm surprised how this one is not working. And the part number, let me double check the part number. So I hope you can see, here is the part number, 5211 so as you can see, the part number here is right and it is identical to the part number that we have on the old ABS control unit. Because when I ordered this ABS control unit, they asked for the old ABS control unit part number. So I gave it to them, that's how they were able to find this. So as you can see, the part number is right there. So we're gonna compare it with the part number on the old ABS control unit. And as you can see right there, the part number is, you know, it's just the one I just read to you. 5211003A. All right, so I'm going to call these guys. I gotta call these guys at Auto ECM. Mm -hmm. I'll give them a call and whatever I find, I'll bring you guys back up. All right, guys, so I did call Auto ECMs and I talked to them on the phone. We kind of went back and forth and they asked me, Based on the part number I gave them, this is what it calls for. So this is the right unit for it. And we compared the part numbers again, and the part numbers looked the same. Now, we found the problem. The lady at the uh, Auto ECMs asked me, she said, uh, if that's the part number of the ABS control unit that you have on the truck, are you sure that's the original ABS control unit? I was like, I don't know. I mean, the truck is pretty old. I think this is the original one. She suggested that I would double check with the Dodge dealership. She said, call the Dodge dealer, give them the VIN number and see if that's the right part number for that ABS control unit. I was like, okay, well, this is not working. I double checked, I mean, I double checked, triple checked, uh, all my tests, I mean, we have power, ground, our communication lines are good, so we should be able to talk to this ABS control unit, or it's just a bad ABS control unit. And she said that she doesn't think this ABS control unit is bad, she just believes in the quality of the job that they do, and I I've, haven't had issues with them. They always supply good parts, and every time I install their stuff, they always work. So I'm even surprised this time. So guess what happened? I called the dealer to double check the part number. The dealer said that this ABS control unit is, up, is obsolete. They don't make these ABS control units anymore. They gave me the part number. Guess what I found? 
the part number they give me was different from this part number that we have here on the ABS control unit that came out of the truck. And I called the owner. The owner told me that at some point this ABS control unit was replaced. Okay, actually they did replace this ABS control unit when the light started coming on on the dash. So the light came on, they replaced it with this ABS control unit and the light remained on. So I called the dealer and they gave me a different part number for this ABS control unit. I'll show you the part number and we're going to compare it to the part number that we have on this old ABS control unit. Alright, so here is the part number that I got from the dealer. 501529AC. Okay, so it's 50155. This is not one, ignore this. So 501529AC. So look at the part number that we have on this ABS control unit. 52110033AE. So this is the part number that I gave the guys at Auto ECMs when I ordered the ABS control module. And this is the wrong ABS control module. Although it looks the same, but the right part number is this one right over here. Okay, so if I had given them this part number, they were going to send me the right ABS control module and we wouldn't have had the issue we have right now. So this ABS control module is the wrong one. We're going to put this back together and I'm going to send this new ABS control module unit that we have. They will send me the right one and after we get the right one, this issue will be fixed. So let's go back under the hood. Alright, so this definitely threw me off. This is not the original ABS control module. So this is the wrong part number. So we ordered this ABS control module. Since this is not the right one, that's why we cannot communicate with this ABS control module. So now what we have to do is we have to get the right ABS control module for this truck so that this issue can be fixed. So this threw me off big time, but I mean, I didn't know. I guess I should have asked the customer but I didn't know that this ABS control module was replaced at some point. I just assumed that this was the original one. Again, don't assume, always ask. So if I had asked at first, we wouldn't have had this issue. But, you know, there's no big deal. I'm going to return this. I will return this ABS control module. Since we have the right part number of the original ABS control module, we're going to find the right one. And once I get the right one, I'll bring you guys back up so that we can install it. Once I find the right ABS control module, we will replace it and this issue will be fixed. So once we install it, we will be able to talk to the ABS control module with the scan tool and our lab scope voltage waveform, I mean the communication voltage waveform, will no longer have a spike. So as you can see, this is definitely abnormal. Okay, so this is what's causing scan tool to not communicate with this ABS control module so right there guys wrong ABS control module so they installed the wrong ABS control module here so I'm gonna get the right one and then I'll bring you guys back up so that we can double check our repair and eventually wrap up this video since I have the right part number now once I get it I will install it and then I'll bring you guys back up I'm not gonna film the removal and the installation process of the other ABS control module. It's pretty much the same, okay? Once we get that replaced, this ABS control module is gonna be able to communicate with the scan tool and the light on the dash will go off. I guess the lesson here is question the customer, you know, interview the customer, ask questions, because if I had asked about all this light and about the repairs that had been previously done to the truck, I would have known. You know, I, I didn't ask as many questions. I saw the light. I went after it. I saw the ABS control module. And the customer also didn't tell me. So so I guess the lesson here is that ask the customer, ask questions. If there's a fault in a particular system, just ask the customer if someone had previously worked on it. If someone had replaced parts on it. Because maybe they replaced the wrong part, you know. I mean, I guess that's a lesson learned for me. Uh, it's always good to... Sometimes interview the customers and I know it's very important. It's a very important step. 
Sometimes we tend to forget it, but always interview the customer. Always ask questions because those questions can lead you to the right direction and that can save you time and money, okay? So ask questions, ask the customer. That's the lesson here. So I'm going to get the new ABS control unit. So once I get the ABS control unit, I will install it and then I'll bring you guys back up so we can double check our repair. All right, guys, we are still here on this 2000 Dodge Ram with a 5.9 diesel. So we're still uh, trying to fix this ABS light concern. So the ABS light remains on on the dash. We did some testing. We realized that the ABS control module was bad. It wasn't talking to the scan tool. And we went ahead and ordered a new ABS control module. But the one that we ordered was wrong because the ABS module on this vehicle had been changed at some point and the one that they replaced it with was the wrong one. So I didn't, re I didn't know that until I talked to the customer. As you guys saw, we all went through this together. But now I did get a used ABS control module, but this one is the right one for the vehicle. The vehicle is a 2000. It's an old vehicle and uh, it was hard to find the right ABS control module for it. But I did get a the right ABS control module from a junkyard somewhere in uh, I think Annapolis. So here is the box and this ABS control module just came in. So I'm gonna get it out of the box so I can show it to you. I wanted to get a remanufactured ABS control module but all the companies that are called didn't have it. The ones they were actually offering, I mean the only option that I had was sending them the old one so they could rebuild it. But since this ABS control module had been replaced, so I couldn't send them this one because this is the wrong one. So I didn't have the original one. I wanted to use a remanufactured one, but I mean, I couldn't get the old one. I mean, most of the ABS control modules for this truck are obsolete right now. The dealer doesn't make them anymore. So here is the new one, well, new one to us, but it's a used one. So here it is. And as I'm looking at the numbers here on the module, the numbers are different. They're way different from the ones we have on this ABS control module. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect this ABS control module to the truck before I disconnect the hydraulic lines on this module. Remember before we installed the other module and once we connected the scan tool, our scan tool couldn't still communicate with the ABS control module. So I'm just going to connect this two electrical connector and then we will connect our scan tool to the truck to see if we will communicate with this ABS control module. So I'll get this connected and then I'll bring you guys back up so we can check it. Alright guys, so I got the ABS control module connected to the truck. So now we're going to test it to see if the ABS control module will be able to communicate with the scan tool. So now let's go to scanner. I mean, I'm doing this because I just don't want to install this ABS control module and then finding out that this ABS control module doesn't want to talk to the computer, then we will have to take it out again. So before I connect, before I disconnect and connect the hydraulic lines to this used ABS control module that we got from the junkyard, I want to make sure that we can communicate with it first before I install it on the truck. So let's go to scanner. Remember before, with the with this ABS control module connected, we had a no communication message. But now let's see if we will be able to communicate with this ABS control module. So let's go to, uh, this is a 2000. So let's auto ID the vehicle. So right there, the scan tool has identified the truck. So let's click OK. Now let's go straight to the ABS control module. Yeah, this is a four-wheel ABS. So now let's read some codes out of this module. Let's see if there's any codes in memory. Let's go to active codes. So right here we have one trouble code in memory. It's 35 rear sensor open. Okay, so something wrong with the rear sensor. So let's back out of here and see if we can read some data. So let's go to data display. So right here, we can read the data from the ABS control module. So this means the ABS control module is communicating with our scan tool. So there's 
definitely communication as you can see we got some front left wheel so wheel speed sensor data pids right over here so this is good so now that I have determined that the scan tool can communicate with the ABS control module so now I can install it I'm gonna install it and I will install all the brake lines and then I'll bring you guys back up it's basically the same process like we did previously with the remanufactured module that we got so I will install this one and then I'll bring you guys back up so we can take this on a test drive alright guys so I got the new ABS control module installed I mean it's used but it's new to us so the module is installed so now I'm going to bring up our lab scope here so we can look at our communication waveform okay so we're gonna look at the communication waveform first and then we'll connect the scan tool to the truck to see if the scan tool will communicate with this ABS control module so I'll bring the lab scope here I'll set it up and then I'll bring you guys back up so we can analyze the waveform alright so I'm back probing the communication wires on this big electrical connector of the ABS control module so I'm back probing the can high wire and the can low wire so now let's go to our lab scope so we're gonna go to scope multimeter I don't know if you can see there's activity here but you can't really see right we can't really see because our voltage scale is really big so we need to decrease our voltage scale so we can see more detail on this waveform. So let's drop down to 2 volts. No, let's go to 5 volts. 5 volts on both of them. And the rule of thumb here is that both communication wires or both lines have to mirror each other. Let's trigger this. So as you can see, we have a good looking voltage pattern. So I'm going to increase our time base so we can see more detail here. So right there, you know, there's no big voltage spike on this one. Remember, the other one had a huge voltage spike here. So there's no voltage spike. This looks good. So let's back out of here. I mean, I like this waveform. This waveform looks pretty good. So let's back out of here. So we're going to go straight to the ABS control module. So we're going to click on NI lock bricks. Let's see if we can look at some data. So let's go to data display. So right over here. Remember before with the other ABS control module, we couldn't even read the data or we couldn't even get any data from the ABS control module so now these are the data that I'm kind of interested in the wheel speed sensor data pids so there is three of them so now what we need to do is we have to drive this vehicle we have to take this vehicle on a test drive and as we drive it this data here will start updating we will see a signal this wheel speed sensors will start producing a signal because these sensors produce a signal when the tire spins when the vehicle is being driven when the vehicle is in motion the wheels spin and these sensors produce a voltage so right now we're reading zero zero but as we start driving we should see a miles per hour number here as we're driving so I'm gonna disconnect these scope test leads and right now if we made the right call, if everything is fixed, once I go inside the truck and start it, the ABS light should go off. And as we're driving, the ABS light will remain off. So I'm going to disconnect these back probes here. So we're going to go inside the truck now. So let's get these test leads out of here. So I'll get these test leads out of the way. And then I'll bring you guys back up so we can go on a test drive and see if the ABS light will remain off while the vehicle is being driven. So I'll bring you guys back up. Alright guys, we are inside the vehicle, so now we're going to verify our repair. Remember before with the truck running, the ABS light was remaining on. So we determined that the ABS control module was bad, we replaced the module. So if everything is working fine on the system, the ABS light should come on momentarily when you first start the truck to do a system check and then the light should go off. 
So now I'm going to start the truck to see if the ABS light will go off with the engine running. So remember, this light over here was on before. So I'm going to start the truck. As you can see, the light just went off. So right there, the light came back on. It's doing a system check. And as you saw, the light went off. So the truck is running. And the ABS light remained off. So this is good. So now we're going to take the truck on a test drive. We're going to test drive it to see if the ABS light will remain off. So now I'm going to bring up our scan tool here. We're going to graph our wheel speed sensors to see if our sensors are working. So we're going to look at the uh, wheel speed sensor data pit. So let's deselect all these data pits. We just want to look at the uh, wheel speed sensor data pits. That's all I want to see. And we're going to graph all of them. So as you can see right now, our sensors are showing zero, zero. So we have zero miles per hour. Once we start driving, these sensors will start showing the wheel speed. Okay, so now let's go on a test drive. So the light is still off. So we're gonna back out. I mean, I always like to drive the vehicle if I'm fixing the ABS system because you could have a sensor that's not working properly and once you start driving if that sensor is not producing a, a signal your ABS light will remain on and as you can see the light is off so that's good so we are driving right now we are on the road so I'm gonna show you the dash so right there our ABS light is still off, so that's good. Right there, we're driving, and I'm gonna show you the scan tool now. So let's see the scan tool here. I'm gonna stop because I don't want to get in an accident. So right here, guys, our wheel speed sensors are definitely working, okay? So right here, our wheel speed sensor are definitely showing the uh, wheel speeds, so that's good. And if one of these wheel speed sensors were not working, if one wasn't working, the ABS light was gonna come on. And as you can see, the ABS light is off, so we're good. We're driving. The vehicle shifts well. The light is off. So, all is well. I'm sure we're gonna have a happy customer. So right there, ABS light is off. All right guys, so everything is looking good. I'm gonna turn around and go back to the shop. I'll bring you guys back up once I'm at the shop so we can wrap up this video. Alright guys, so I'm gonna leave this right over here. This truck is fixed. We test drove it. Now the ABS light is no longer remaining on while the engine is running. So our customer is gonna be happy. So I'm just gonna recap what we did. This vehicle came here because the ABS light was remaining on and the transmission was shifting erratically. I mean, the customer said sometimes it wasn't even shifting right. Well, yes, because the transmission control module also needs to know the wheel speed so it can upshift and downshift properly. But since our ABS control module wasn't working, the transmission control module wasn't getting that information. So that's what was causing the transmission to shift erratically. So we confirmed the customer's complaint. We connected the scan tool to the truck to see if we had any trouble codes in the ABS control module. But unfortunately, we couldn't talk to the ABS control module. And like we all know, if you have a module that's not talking, you have to check your powers and grounds. So we checked our powers and grounds at the connector of the ABS control module. We determined that the ABS control module was getting power and ground. So if you have power and ground at the module, and if that module is still not talking, then the issue is the module itself. So we ordered the module, but unfortunately the module that I ordered was wrong because I didn't know that someone had replaced the module 
in this truck trying to fix this vehicle but they got the wrong module so that's why the light remained on so we finally got the right module we installed it so now the ABS light is off and everything is working fine I don't know if I did mention this I also adjusted the gap of the right front wheel speed sensor the gap between the relaxer wheel and the sensor itself because the signal that the sensor here was producing it was a weak signal the amplitude of the signal wasn't uh, high enough so I had to adjust that and everything was fine we test drove it now the ABS light is no longer remaining on on the dash so this is fixed I'm sure the customer will be happy once he picks up his car so I'm gonna drive this back outside and then I'll call the customer so he can come and pick it up so I hope you like this video if you do like this video give it a thumbs up if you didn't like this video give it a thumb down but if you do you gotta tell me why so we can make better videos in the future if this is your first time here subscribe to my channel ring the bell so you can get notified every time I upload a new video if you have any comments questions criticism leave them in the comment box thanks for watching guys see you next time